Alrighty. Consider this mass hanging from the ceiling. Is it accelerating? That is the first question I must ask you. And I must ask you to neglect the rotation of the Earth and the motion of the Earth around the Sun and assume that we're in a stationary frame of reference. Is that mass accelerating? And it's, in fact, it's not even moving. Okay? And so I know that this mass, all of the forces acting on that mass, and there are three distinct forces acting on that mass, I know that they all add up to zero. Okay? And specifically, I know, and then the three forces are that there's a force going sort of this way. Okay? There's a force going this way, right, off at an angle, and there's a force straight down, the force of gravity. Presumably, it's about 9.81 newtons straight down. Okay? Um, and I know that if I add all those forces, that I get zero. Now, specifically, I know that if I add them in the x direction, in the x direction, they add up to zero. And if I add them in the y direction, if I add them in the y direction, they add up to zero. Yes? Because they have to add up to zero in all directions for it to not accelerate in all directions, right? So that's how we're going to handle it, is we're going to set up one of these tables and we're going to add the vectors together. And actually for this one, to solve for these things, we'll have to solve a system of equations, which we will do with a matrix, okay? Let's look at a simpler version of this, and that is finding, if they give you two forces, finding the third force or the final force that makes everything add up to zero. And that's actually relatively simple. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. There we go. So now we got the, the board on there. And it really is just straightforward. It doesn't require great acts of brilliance to figure out statics problems. It's more just persistence and mathematical ability. Okay. So let's look at the example that we have here. I think I must have got tired of it. All right, step by step, draw the picture, calculate the weights, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put them all on the board here, right? Okay. Uh, find the force and theta such that the system will be in equilibrium. So we've got some object, right? This could be like, a, I don't know, like a mass or something like that, right? Okay. And we've got a force that is this way. And this guy is 23 newtons. And we call that force A. And this angle here is 29 degrees, right? And we've got force B, which isn't quite as big, okay? And this is uh, 14 newtons, okay? And this angle here is 56 degrees, right? And we're going to presume, we're going to presume that there's another force here, some other force that we would have to exert on this. These guys are not going to be in equilibrium. There's no way these two things add to zero, correct? Yes? Okay. And so there's going to be a third force, and this force is called the equilibrant. And I thought for so long that it was equilibrant, like brilliant, but it's just equilibrant, which made it somewhat less fun to say. Wouldn't equilibrium be more fun to say? <laughs> it's, it's, sad. it's sad. In some way, it just makes me a little bit sadder, you know? Okay? So, but we can still be brilliant when we calculate the equilibrium. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Even though it's stupid the way it's pronounced and spelled. It's, right? Okay? So, um, what we do, basically, step by step, is, is uh, for the known forces, For the known forces, find the trig angle, right? Break it into components. Right? Break them into components. And then once we've done that, right, essentially we're gonna add we're gonna add the known forces. Right? In other words, we're gonna add x to x and y to y. We'll add them up. 
And it's true that the equilibrant will be negative the, known, the sum of the known forces, okay? And I'll explain this, I'll do this, this will make sense. The equilibrant is just equal to negative the sum of the known forces, right? So this little thing here means sum of, that means negative, and that's the known forces. So all it really is is an, is an exercise in vector addition and then an exercise in not. Okay, so let's set this guy up here. We've got A, and we've got B, and we've got the sum, and we've got the equilibrant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we need to know the magnitude and the trig angle, right? And the X component and the Y component. Look at that, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. What better way to do this than a spreadsheet, right? And I do this, I try to be hyper, hyper anal retentive about this because I'm such a spaz, I just, I'm just random, you know? So the more organization, the more you do here, X and Y. The more organized you are, the better chance you are of actually pulling it off, right? Okay, so A is easy. A is 23 newtons. Isn't this, this is the trig angle, isn't it? Remember, the trig angle is the angle that is anti-clockwise from the x-axis, yeah? So it's like, zzzz, yeah? So that is the trig angle 29, yes? So 29 degrees is the trig angle. And then B, the magnitude is 14 newtons. And then what is, is 56 the trig angle? Is 56 the trig angle? No, because it's not, it is not anti-clockwise from here, right? So we got to figure this out. It's, it's actually not all the way to 180. It's 56 short of 180, isn't it? Yeah? So it's going to be 180 minus 56. Is that 124? So it's 124 degrees. Yeah, that works. Okay. And then, I guess the sum here, we need to, uh, we need to, uh, let's erase this. We'll do the sum here. And the equilibrant. There we go. Okay, so now take your calculator. Make sure that you are in degrees. Okay, so I, I'm going second mode on mine. Yours is just mode. Okay, and then I go 23, 23 uh, cos 29, 23 sine 29. And I'm so lazy, I'm actually storing these in memory locations. We only have two sig figs, so if I write down four, we're fine. This is 20.12. This is 11.15. And it makes sense that this guy would have more x, than, more x than y, right? And they would both be positive. I'm just doing a little double check here, right? Okay. And then this guy is going to be 14 cos 124. Should get a negative number. And 14 sine 124 should get a positive number. Okay? So this guy is uh, 7.829. And this one is 11.61. Are we good so far? Are you guys able to get that? They're being very quiet, but they're nodding. I'm just telling the camera what I see here. Oh, did I forget the minus sign here? Yeah, there we go. Right. And this makes sense for this vector that it has less x than y because that's an awkward angle. It's not adorable, right? Okay, so this side's going to be shorter than this side. The, uh, the, y, the x should be negative. The y should be positive. 